I mean, Lucas, you guys are uh, seven and zero now in conference play. Um, what's the attitude, emotion like in locker room after that one? Uh, everyone's really excited. It was fun to have like a big. I think this is our first sellout. Maybe Temple. Um, so it was really cool to have so many fans and um, like friends and family at the game. Um, everyone's really hyped, but we try to like we have a one and zero mindset. Um, so we were one and zero today. Tomorrow we're zero and zero. Try and go one and zero, even though we don't have practice. Want to know tomorrow means like recovery and doing homework and taking care of your body and stuff. Um, so we kind of have that that mindset. So after today, like it's nice. We'll watch film Monday. Um, we'll see what we did well, and then obviously what we didn't do too well. And we try to go one and again. Same thing Tuesday and up until the next game. So we're excited, but you move on. I mean, obviously, you know, there were high expectations coming into the season. Had a couple losses, you know, early in the the non conference. What do you feel like has changed, if anything? Is it just you guys learning each other more? Like, what's different now from early in November? Um, I think guys are learning to play with each other more. Um, I think there's some guys that, obviously, I wasn't here last year. Um, but I know that there were some guys that didn't play as much last year, and they're playing this year. Um, and then there's a few, like, core guys that were back. So I think um, guys like Amari and Justin are getting used to playing with different dudes, um, with them two, like, making so many plays for us. Um, and I think that's just the biggest part. Like we're we're kind of just hitting a, a good spot right now as we wind down the season. But um, I think some of the struggles at the beginning of the year is we're, we're so deep and coach trying to figure out um, a good rotation for us. And I think right now we have a solid rotation and guys kind of know when they're coming in and going out and they kind of know what to do when they get on the court. Um, but we have so many dudes that can hoop. Like it, it takes a few games to to figure out um, a mixture of guys. Is so I think we're just figuring it out now. You're a big part of that. Figuring out your like you, you, this stretch for you has been I think probably your most consistent starting and like and and, and, and in your role. H how much of it was like a feeling out process for you to figure out where you fit in with the, with the new guys? Uh, it's definitely weird. It's it's even though I just crossed the street, um, it's weirder being a grad transfer than I thought. Um, and Coach Donahue and Coach Spiker coach together, so they run a lot of similar stuff. But it's still a big adjustment because there's different personnel and every program is is completely different. Um, so it definitely took me a little bit of time to figure stuff out. And um, it was definitely a hard adjustment. But I think just being around, being around the guys and then having a more consistent role now and, and kind of knowing when I'm coming in and when I'm coming out and um, like knowing what I'm supposed to do out there, I think that makes it a lot easier. I don't have to think as much and I can kind of just play. Um, and I think, again, that's like what everyone is doing. Just like everyone kind of figured out their role at this point. And um, I'm sure we'll make some adjustments when we need to. But, um, you know, we're kind of hitting our groove. So. Uh, 14 points is your highest so far as the Dragon. Is that something that um, you've been developing? Like you think that joining, like joining the uh, starting rotation has helped you settle in there and kind of improve in that area? Uh, I think I, I feel more comfortable on the court now just from like playing more. Um, but I mean, I've never been a big time scorer. <laughs> like 14 is my career high. I've, I've scored 14 before. Um, I've never been able to get it past it, fortunately. But, um, but that's... I can bring that to the team, but I, I can bring a lot of other things, um, rebounding and defending and um, being another ball handler and um, cutting and, and, and do little things like that, making winning plays. Um, it's, it's definitely something, obviously, guys sag off me. I'm not a big-time jump shooter. Um, but today, I think I caught the ball and was more aggressive than normal, um, getting into pull-up jumpers and um, kind of eating up the space quicker than I've been doing. So that's something that I work on a lot. Um, it's just I haven't put it into the games yet until today. So um, hopefully I can... Uh, keep getting better at that. And I think if I'm scoring the ball more, like it makes us better. Um, Cause it's just one other guy that you have to worry about as a threat. So and it takes some attention off of him and Justin and house and, and Mate. So did you know you're about to hit your career high? And is that why you did the dunk there? <laughs> no, actually <laughs> I wasn't thinking about it. Um, I just saw that there was time left on the shot clock mm -hmm. and he gave me a lane. And I thought if I get a dunk right here, I wasn't going to dunk it. I was just going to drive and pass it, but the lane opened, and I saw the basket, and I knew the crowd would love it, so I just did it. <laughs> Lucas, I mean, last year at Penn, you guys won eight in a row during conference play. A any similarities in terms of sort of the attitude or, or, or what you guys are you know, doing right that from last year to this year? I know it's, they're two different teams, but just in terms of putting together a winning streak this time of the year? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it definitely feels similar because we also had a, a shaky um, preseason schedule or a hard preseason schedule and a shaky preseason record. Um, so it definitely feels pretty similar. And I think um, just like the atmosphere of the team feels really similar. Like guys are excited coming into practice and, and laughing and joking. Um, and Coach Biker, <clears throat> he does his best to like make sure that we're, we're locked in. So I'll have days where he comes in and you can tell he's just, he wants to yell at us. Just, and it's, he wants to do it just to make sure that we're not joking off and just because we're winning and stuff. Um, but all that feels like 
really, really similar. Um, and hopefully we can keep it going. I mean, I think I think we're doing a really, really good job right now, and we're um, not even playing our best. So I think um, this team has a lot more potential, and, and our ceiling is higher than we've shown. Amari, to, to go off what Lucas said, he said you guys don't even feel like you're playing your best yet. I was going to ask, how, how much do you feel like this team is living up to the potential that you had in the preseason? Uh, like Lucas said, we're just figuring it out. You know, a lot of guys are doing different things. You know, we got Shane Blake coming off the bench. You know, one of our best defenders, guys like Kobe. So, you know, just like knowing our goals, like you said, it takes pressure off each other. So, yeah, that's the main thing. You've been here four years now, sold out, went over Drexel by 19 points. Uh, 7 and 0, like, I mean, excitement level for you uh, coming off a game like that? Yeah, that's definitely exciting, you know. Stupid section, you know, sold out game. But it's just the kind of, just keeping it even cure right now, you know. We we're enjoying it while it lasts right now, but we know that as soon as Monday hits and we get back to practice, it's so only myself, so. You guys had like five guys scoring in the double digits. Does it help um, knowing you have that depth, like, behind you guys both? Yeah, I think absolutely. I think. <clears throat> Um, you look at the other day um, playing Mammoth, uh, like Shane Blakeney comes in, hits some big shots, makes some big plays. Um, Kobe today hits some big shots. Like I think one of the best things about the team is like there's times when some of the starters at the end of the game were sitting on the bench, and there's times when Mari's sitting on the bench and GT is out there, and Mari's jumping around like a little kid, like cheering for him. Um, and the same with me, like there's I'll be on the bench at the end of the game. Um, I think that's like the beauty of this team is like guys are really excited to see each other happy. Um, so. From like a moral perspective, it's it's like awesome. But then when you're actually playing the game, like it's really helpful because you're not going to be your best every single time out. Um, you're not going to hit all your shots. So it's nice when you know, like, all right, we can bring Kobe McGee in. Kobe McGee might hit five threes today. Shane Blake might hit a few threes today. Like, um, so it's nice when you know you have guys that are going to come in and there's not going to be any drop off. I like to add what you said with pressure. For like the last few games, someone's had to shake you first half or second half, but you don't really notice it because you've got you know someone coming off the bench doing the same thing. So I feel just like having that depth and, you know, 14 guys who can just do the same thing, I think it helps. Them out, so. <coughs> you guys? Okay, Mari, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh. All right. The beauty of having veteran players is you're going to hear the exact same thing in just different words right now. Those guys know our culture. They speak dragon. All right? So how can we help you? How can I help you? Uh, Zach, obviously. Josh Verlin, City of Basketball Love, <laughs> Philadelphia Inquirer. Uh, obviously, 7 no, you can't ask for a better conference start than that. Where are you in terms of the balance of acknowledging how well the team is playing right now and not wanting them to kind of get too big egos or, or you know, settle into it? I'd love to settle in to keep winning. <laughs> but you know but what I mean. I understand your question and what you're saying. I would say that the guys have done a great job. We're not like a big slogan program, right? All summer was kind of be about your work. Be a pro. You want to be a pro, you got to act like a pro. Uh, and, and I think Luke House has embodied that as much as anybody, but I think everybody does that. Um, where are we? What's got us here won't get us where we want to go. And we know that. And success is owned by nobody. You want like a great coaching cliche? It's only rented. So because we're 7 0 means we have no right to be 8 0 or anything else. We were 1-0 for 40 minutes today. And then when the week starts up, we'll be 0-0, and, and we're trying to go 1-0 on Thursday. I believe at Towson. Is that right, Toops? That is correct. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. All right, what else? You had a, you had a use it or lose it available to you at the end, end of the first half. You didn't use it because right. of a trust level? Well... A little PTSD. Last year, if you're at Wilmington, we were up 10, had a crazy five-point swing. I was trying to get another big on the floor. I messed the whole thing up, to be very honest with you. But you wanted to call it? I didn't want to call it because I think Martin is a really, really good coach. I didn't want to give him another time to call something. So I wanted to get our biggest guys in there and see if we could figure it out. And, and credit to Drumgool, who's a really good player and a really good scorer. He had a big, big, big game today. Um, so, again... I think that's part of the reason why I think we can say we can, we can be better. We try and get three stops in a row. We call them bricks. 
We try to stack bricks all the time. Uh, we had, I think, four or five possessions. We were at point two and didn't get that third stop. So um, we can play better. And, uh, you know, we talk about sharpening our edge. Certainly we have success, but I think we can be sharper. Uh, we had a crazy turnover late in the game that looked like something, um, you know, it's, it's not us. So there's a lot. There's still things we can clean up. And I think to Lucas's point and, and Amari, the guys, they got a growth mindset. They still want to keep learning and doing things. We were talking about stuff yesterday that we haven't done in different times and situations. So uh, we've got a staff that wants to push our players and the players that want to be at their best. So we've got some work to do. You're – I know you're probably locked in for, for most of all the 40 minutes, but when the game's getting away there at the end and you guys have a couple dunks and, and the crowd's going, like is, is there a moment there where you're like, yeah, this is... No, we get a stop. What do you expect me to say? We get a stop. <laughs> um, obviously, you've been probably familiar with Lucas's game for years, but how have you seen him kind of settle into your rotation now, especially over the last nine games when he's been in the starting role? Yeah, I, I think your question about knowing Lucas for years, when I mean, he was... We were the first offer he had out of high school when he was at Abington. And uh, Coach Donahue at Penn, certainly you know our history, and he's provided just about every job opportunity been a part that I've had. So I always follow Penn and cheer for Penn. I might even go to the Palestra game tonight to cheer him against Harvard. Um, but so we certainly know what's going on there. Um, but to be su I'm not surprised at all with what Lucas is doing. I've known him for a long time. First and foremost, he's an elite, high-character guy. It's taken a little bit of time, just like it does with any new guy, whether it's a grad transfer, a four-year transfer, or a junior college transfer. You rarely do you kind of hit the gr ground running. And uh, with that, had an adjustment period here. With that, also had an injury. I mean, this guy is, is very, very durable. He hasn't and had an injury and uh, a little bit of an AC sprain in his shoulder. So gave us what he wanted to and tried to go out there, but he needed rest. So missed a couple games, and he was, he was bummed out about it. But uh, I think we're seeing a really good version of Lucas Monroe right now. Uh, Zach, you guys took a you know, couple losses early in the, in the season. Um, did you make adjustments, like any significant things that you changed at that point? Was it more just sort of, sort of about staying the course and, and learning from each other? Like, what do you think maybe made the, the, has made the difference from early in the season to now? Oh, I, I think there's a lot of belief and confidence in our locker room in each other and certainly from our staff to our players. Um, I think our guys kept working, maybe worked a little more. And I've said a lot before in phone calls with talking to my dad, driving home from work or whatever it may be, but you can't expect more and do less. Uh, our guys are doing more because they're working, right? And, and Jamie Bergens, Justin Moore at the uh, Chavis shooting camp after school, has started and got, kept working. So um, Coach Fortier has done some work with Yame. Franz has been working with Kobe since he, since he got back from Europe. Um, so I think being steady in our approach and not wavering because we shot five for 22 at West Virginia with 17 turnovers. We, I mean, had some really, I don't want to say bad losses because those are good teams, but you look at how we're playing now to how we played then, certainly we've improved offensively and, and taking care of the basketball. So... Um, I don't think we – we may have tweaked a couple things, maybe a few more minutes here or there, put a guy in a lineup. Um, but you got to adjust. And uh, the guys, to their credit, I thought they handled all that really well. And Justin Moore, um, I, I just was looking at some of his shooting numbers. He's, he's shooting percentages are much improved since conference play has started. Have you seen – uh, anything different from him in terms of confidence or, or is it just, again, just sort of that offense season work you were talking about? If kind of you know Justin Moore and you've covered him since McDevitt, the last thing I'm worried about Justin Moore is having confidence in himself. <laughs> he's been uh, he, he's got a healthy serving of confidence and I want all our guys to have that. Um, what has changed is I think maybe the quality of shot he's taken is a little bit better. He took some tough, tough ones, tough ones today and made him. Um, you really want to know the secret? It's just me and you talking. It's not healthy. He wasn't healthy all last year. He had a game winner against Charleston, and his shoulder was all banged up. He played the next game against Monmouth and had five turnovers, and we thought it was a freshman going up and down. The reality was he's got a labor tear in his hip. He's got a shoulder injury, and he practiced one time after that game for the next month. Then he had surgery. We cut him in April, and he was out till Labor Day, technically out till Labor Day. 
You can ask some of his roommates. I knew he was playing five on five mid-August, but I'm not going to get crazy on that. But because he's a competitor, but when you're out for six months, right? You don't don't open opening night at La Salle and pick up where you left off, right? So. I think we're seeing the best version of Justin, not because he's doing something different or really working harder or less. We're just seeing a healthy version, and I love it. The team's three-point percentage since the U Albany game in mid-December really seemed to turn a corner. Was there something that you guys were doing um, in practice that, or do you think it's just settling in? Our practice plans are pretty simple. They're getting simpler, right? And they're kind of templated out with our, our sport performance team and, and, and Coach, Coach P in the weight room and Coach Steven, Steven Kim and our athletic trainers. We're making sure we have shooting segments. We're making sure we have some dry segments. We're making sure we have live segments and they're all competitive. And uh, based on where we are, three days out, two days out, one day out from a game, that's what it is. So I don't think anything's changed. I think it's a credit to our assistant coaches who are working with our guys and our players. We've got high character guys that believe in the process and they're doing a great job with it. I know Jeff asked you about, you know, trying to get the end of the game if you were soaking it in. But, but to then go back bigger picture, I mean, 14-6, and 7-0, and 0, front runners in the conference for the first time here. I mean, what, what, what's this like for you right now? We just got to go 1-0 and 0 on Thursday. It's, you and I always get into these sparring matches. I'm never gonna give <laughs> it's not you the, sparring matches. I'm never going to give you the quote you want, right? <laughs> the reality is this is we choose to be about the process. And our, we just got to have the right approach. There's no part of it that's, that's even slightly rewarding to, to see the... It's, I think it's validating to see guys who work have success. But there's plenty of film to... We want to sharpen our edge because we want to be better. That's all you got. Sorry, good try. <laughs> Thank you, bro. All right, guys, be careful. It's cold out there. All right? See you, see you.